Are you interested in pursuing a career in space? Space Career Coaching Services might help. Find out more in today's episode. Three, two, one. Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this episode, we interview space consultant and author, Laura Sayward Forsick. Laura is the owner of Astrolytical, a space consulting firm specializing in space science, industry, and policy. Laura and her company also offer space and aerospace career coaching services to students and professionals. In today's episode, we'll dive more into the latest space news and find out more about how you can pursue a career in the space industry. Your Space Journey. Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Well, it is my pleasure. Um, now, this is obviously a very amazing time for space exploration. You know, the past few weeks, my gosh, we've seen both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin accomplish their first space uh, tourism flights. SpaceX is, of course, continuing along its rapid, crazy pace to launch Star- Starship very soon. What do you think about all this as a space enthusiast? Oh, I love it. I love all the activity. We've seen a lot of increases in things that we had been waiting for for so long. And it's just really heartening to see it all come together. Now, we are still a long way off before we have, you know, affordable mass human spaceflight or um, or even just yeah. regular commercial suborbital spaceflight. But um, I love seeing things start to really happen. You know, I love that too. And, and the one thing I, I read this right before we started meeting is that, um, Boeing Starliner, unfortunately, still having some troubles. Um, just right before this interview, Boeing announced that Starliner is returning to the factory uh, so they can troubleshoot their per, uh, propulsion system. Um, this breaks my heart. I, I was actually covering that launch in December 2019 when they had the first one. And I got to speak with several of the Boeing engineers before launch. And, and they were just so enthusiastic and so passionate. Um, I guess my heart went out to them. And, and no one said space is easy, but I don't know, Boeing just, I, I can't seem to catch a break, I guess. I, what are your feelings on just the whole commercial crew, SpaceX, Boeing, that kind of thing? It is difficult to see when a company struggles. And um, I think it's to be expected that space always is a lot harder and takes a lot longer and is usually more expensive than we anticipate. Uh, both SpaceX Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner were anticipated to begin operations in 2017. And right. we didn't see SpaceX Crew Dragon actually take anybody to, to the International Space Station until May 2020. So, you know, I believe Boeing will get there and it's just going to take a lot more time. But it, it really goes to show how competition works and the commercial crew program choosing two participants uh, was a smart move to make. You know, I totally agree with that, too. And one thing that I thought was kind of funny, too, I'm going to go back to just Virgin Galactic's Richard Branson and Blue Origin's Jeff Bezos speaking of competition. Um, there's been some debate lately over what, who we should consider an astronaut. And, you know, I, I kind of thought, you know, should they do more than just going above the Carmen line? Um, for aviation, this kind of reminds me of the difference between an aviator and a passenger. Just what are your thoughts on that? Language changes and language changes, as you just mentioned, in aviator versus passenger and, and the ways that we think about air flight has changed over the past century. And so the way we think about space flight is naturally also evolving. And so right now we have this word that means a person who goes to space, um, astronaut, right? It, it's right. not well defined on purpose. And there's really no real reason to define it. Um, there's government agencies such as the FAA that define it for their own purposes. But that's not a definition of astronaut. That's just a definition of who gets FAA commercial astronaut wings. A right. definition of a NASA professional astronaut is going to be different from a def- from you know the definition Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin are using to put you know, astronaut um, pins on their customers. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't see necessarily a reason to limit who we call astronauts, but it might be in the future that the word evolves and we don't even use it anymore, except in rare circumstances. You know, that's a good point too. And, and Laura, I have to admit, you know, just, just your, your space sort of journey is what really has intrigued me and inspired me and many others. Cause you know, you've been really actively making your dream happen. And I love, you have this awesome blog called Laura space on space and I, I was reading your, your recent entry on that and found out that I, I didn't know this, but you're a graduate student, I think, of Alan Stearns. 
Yeah, so Alan Stern and I have been working together since I um, went to graduate school at the University of Central Florida and um, met him when he was starting a conference called the Next Generation Suborbital Researchers Conference. And he and I have worked together on other projects, but this is a conference that happens approximately every two years now. And it's really exciting to see science happen on these suborbital flights. Science has been happening for a few years on uncrewed flights of uh, New Shepard and uh, Spaceship Two. But now that last Unity uh, 22 mission from Virgin Galactic, it was mm-hmm. the first human tended suborbital uh, mission, which is just so exciting to see. So I, I love the fact that researchers are finally getting a chance to fly research on the in, on, on these space flights that are going to be much more accessible and affordable than you know, flying to orbit. See, I think that's incredible, and I cannot wait till he. I think he's scheduled to go aboard Virgin Galactic. Um, hopefully, not too far into the future. But let's talk. Let's talk about, more about you. Just a few years ago, you created Astrolytical, which offers space analysis and consulting. Uh, can you just just more about what led you to form Astrolytical and sort of give our audience a, just a general idea of the services you provide? Sure. I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because oh. I hadn't intended to start my own business. It was um, like, I have no business training. I'm a scientist. And so my uh, previous employer went bankrupt. You know, that happens with space startups. And mm-hmm. at that point, I was literally just a few weeks away from giving birth to my first child as I was clearing out the office at Kennedy Space Center. I'm like, what do I do? Wow. I can't just go look for a job right now. And so <laughs> I decided to start my own company just to see if I could, because why not? And it was one of those things where um, I had nothing to lose. That first year was really tough. That first year, I had no idea what I was doing running a business. I I made some bad decisions, took some bad clients, um, and that happens. And you learn. And I've learned a ton. I I learned to value myself more. I've learned to be more selective about the clients I take on. Um, And this year, for whatever reason, last year was was hard with the pandemic. But for this year, it's been our best year yet. And I'm really pleased to see how Astrolytical is growing after five and a half years. Oh, well, congratulations on that growth. And, and one thing that really intrigued me, that really caught my eye, is your space career coaching. And of course, you know, I love the uh, name of your packages because they're called Your Space Journey, I believe. <laughs> I was just yeah, wondering if you I, can... I, I, I didn't realize that you had a, a similar name attached to your podcast before I um, named those. And so, yeah, the, the space career coaching came about um, sort of about... Uh, when I realized how much demand there was, when I was a student, I really could have used somebody to really show me how to move forward in my career. And it wasn't until I got my first full-time job that I hired a career coach and it wasn't a space career coach that didn't exist, but I hired someone to really help guide me and like, how do I move forward in my career? Um, And I realized there's a lot of demand for that, um, both with students, especially um, university students and graduate students, but also um, professionals who have been working in other industries and other careers and always wanted to work in space. So the majority of my clients are actually people who come from different fields and want to work in space and want to transition. And it's been really great to see how people take the experiences and skills that they have and apply it to space because space is naturally multidisciplinary. It takes expertise from every field you can possibly imagine and brings it all together to make successful space business because space is not an industry. It's it's a place to do business in many different industries. And I love helping people get there. So that's a good point too. And, and I, I love how you even have that structured. Again, you have, you have workbooks, you have courses, you even offer one-on-one coaching. Can you just tell us a little bit about the, just the different areas that you offer sort of uh, space career consulting? Sure, yeah. So people who want to have a little help in their careers, whether they are students or professionals working in another industry, or even professionals working in space who just want to transition their career forward, um, they can either go get the course or the workbook and do it on their own pace, you know, switch around chapters, take the chapters that mean the most to them and skip the ones that don't apply, or they can have one-on-one coaching with me either by phone or by email. And it really helps having that um, personalized attention because there is no set formula. It's all dependent on the person's uh, goals and their motivations and what it is they want and what they're struggling with in the moment. So for a lot of people, that's finding a job. But for some people, that is progressing in their current job or um, getting through some kind of barrier that they have in front of them. And that's where I come in is to help guide them and help them make connections and, and, and give them the confidence that they need to move forward and succeed. 
And it, it actually bridges quite well with the consulting work that Astrolytical does because I've had some people who start out in career coaching, ha- make a startup, and then switch over to consulting uh, services through Astrolytical where I help them either you know, with the proposal that they're working on or some kind of business development, whatever their base project is that they're trying to get off the ground. See, I think that's incredible. And I, I imagine you've seen just, a, as you said, sort of a surge in the interest and not only the interest in, in candidates and in trying to get into the space field, but also just the opportunities out there. We have so many space companies out there and so many opportunities. And I imagine it's moving at a lightning pace. Yeah, this year, I'm seeing increased interest in non-U.S. companies. I'm sorry, non-U.S. countries and companies um, mm-hmm. wanting to get involved in space, where it's still huge growth potential in the United States, but other countries are seeing where they can get involved as well, and more investor opportunities as well this year. So more investment firms are coming and seeing how they can get involved and how they can invest their funds in a growing industry. Now, Laura, to go, just going back again, I mean, I know you were a graduate, you've been in this field for a while, but what really sort of drew you into the space sector? What, what sort of influenced you to say, you know, this is where I want to go? I've always loved space since I was a kid, and I credit my parents to cultivating that love of science fiction within me, Star Trek and and, and stories like that that really captured my imagination. Um, And when I was young in middle school, my parents sent me to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama. So I went twice in middle school, twice in high school, and then twice as an adult as part of an internship program at NASA. And I just absolutely fell in love with space from a young age. As soon as I went to that first space camp summer um, for just a week in Huntsville, I knew I found my people. I I actually (laughs) cried as I was leaving because I just, I, I loved it so much. And so when I was trying to figure out my major for college, it was just, I, I, I'm a scientist. I naturally went to astrophysics because not only is it physics, sure. which I just I just loved, but also the the ways that we can figure out the universe. How do we, you know, explain what we see through our telescopes and especially Hubble? I had Hubble images all over my bedroom as a kid. And how do we explain it? I, I had a telescope, you know, you can't see much with the tiny telescope that I had, but I still used it in my in the front yard and and tried to see what I could see with the moon. And it wasn't good enough really to see like Jupiter very well or Saturn, but I tried. <laughs> and, you know, you try to figure out the universe and what you see. And as, that's what drew me to space is just really, really wanting to unravel those mysteries in a scientific way. Wow. See, that's fantastic. I, I love too. even when you were a graduate student, I believe that's when you got to experience your first zero G experience. Can you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Oh, that was so fun. So yeah, I've done zero G. First, I did it with NASA through their program that's currently discontinued at Ellington Field in Houston, ah. and then through Zero G Corporation, which continues to run even to this day doing parabolic flights. And it's just amazingly fun. There's nothing like it at all, uh, where you literally have an on off switch for gravity. <laughs> it's not a simulation. You really truly are diving. And as you're diving, you feel that microgravity sensation for about 20, 25 seconds. Um, wow. And there's nothing like it at all. And, and I would absolutely do it again if I had the opportunity. Um, I was you know, taken as a student uh, through a research project. So that's how I was able to go last time. And I had the opportunity again in the future. Um, I would take it. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's only something you can do in, in 25 seconds, though. So my, my goal is to actually get to space, where I can either, you know, go up for a few minutes and warm it, or, you know, ideally go to order oh, the moon. The moon sounds wonderful to me. I'll take the reduced gravity of the moon any day. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm, I, I cannot wait to the day you go into space, because I just know that's going to happen. I just, it's a matter of when, right? It, absolutely. In fact, I'm writing a book right now. That yeah, is hopefully going to come out early next year. Um, that is ties in the perspectives of people who are planning to go, who have tickets, who you know, in some way are booked to fly on a future flight, and um, really shows how people are preparing. You know, how they're preparing holistically. You know, not just physical, but also mentally and emotionally and spiritually, as well as those surprises that flown astronauts have experienced. And it's going to be a really great guide for like me who who absolutely want to go someday i don't have a title yet uh oh. but um hopefully by the end of this year you should be able to pre-order it that sounds great so by the end of the year they can pre-order it and it comes out early 2022 then right yes excellent well aside from your book what's next for you and astrolytical 
Astralytico is continuing to grow. So we have just started these little mini reports called flybys, which are currently undergoing a redesign, which will then tie into larger reports called orbits. Uh, so you fly by a topic and then you can orbit a topic. Nice. And I love that. They're going to be on all kinds of different topics. So the ones that are out there right now are on space tourism and launch delays. And the future one is going to be on um, in-space manufacturing. And there's just a whole lot where we can really explore topics that are not widely covered. Um, so I'm looking forward to growing the team a little bit more as well and getting some of these really great topics out there. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Laura, I just want to thank you for taking the time to join us today. We're so excited to just watch your career, watch you help others, and uh, just see how Astrolytical is making such a great impact. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, there are so many wonderful, incredible things happening in the space industry today, and I'm so glad that Laura joined us to discuss them. I want to thank her for joining us. Also, if you're interested in pursuing a career in the space industry, please check out their space coaching services today. You can check out more on their website, astrolytical.com. I'll put links in the show notes. But for those of you listening, it's astrolytical, A-S-T-R-A-L-Y-T-I-C-A-L.com. Again, I want to thank you for joining us today as well. If you can share this episode with a friend, we'd certainly appreciate it. Otherwise, please give us a like or a thumbs up. Uh, We certainly appreciate that too. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. God bless.